If you're outside of the continental United States of America and you want to know how to do business with our U.S. federal government, you want to watch this video right now. Hello everyone, my name is Eric Coffey, host of ScoreContracts.com and today we're discussing how to do business with the U.S. federal government as an international entity. This is a long awaited video because a lot of people I'm receiving emails from subscribers that are saying, hey Eric, I'm in Sweden, I'm in Bahrain, I'm in Malaysia, how do I do contracts with the U.S. federal government? I want to read just a few emails right here today before we jump into the, today's lesson. I'm a general contractor with many years of experience here in Mexico and the United States. How would I go about finding government contracts here abroad? Second email, good evening. My business partner and I want to know if it's possible to enter this particular market of supplying U.S. government as German citizens. If you can, give us some information about how we can actually start a business based out of Germany. You're in luck because today we're going to talk about how to do business with the U.S. government if you are an international company. All right. So just like the United States has the SAM registration and DUNS number for U.S. entities, it's very similar for companies that outside of the United States. There's just one other step that you've got to do prior to getting registered in SAM. Now, that step is what's called a NATO cage code or an N as a Nancy cage code. So a NATO cage code is a cage code specifically assigned to international entities such as yourself. What you want to do is before you get registered in SAM, you have to first request a NATO cage code. I have here the instructions for requesting a NATO cage code for companies who do not currently have a U.S. government contract. And what we'll do, we'll make sure to add on the bottom of our show notes page a link to this PDF document for all of you to watch. But for right now in this video, we're going to go through the instructions. So the first thing we want to do is we want to request our NATO cage code. And we do that by heading over here to the ePortal, the NSPA.NATO portal. Again, the link will be in the show notes page. We're going to head over to the portal and request our NATO cage code. Once we've requested our NATO cage code, and again, once you do that, you fill out the instructions, you follow the instructions on the screen. Once you do that, you want to wait up to 10 business days before it's processed. But once you request a NATO cage code and they process your cage code, then you need to validate it and the commercial and government entity program site. So you want to request a cage code, then you're going to validate to make sure it's requested. And then the third step is to actually request your international DUNS number. Let's see what that looks like. On this form here where it's done in Barrett Street, you can click choose your country. And once you choose your country, you can go through and request an international DUNS number. So once you have your international DUNS number and your NATO cage code, now the third step would be to apply for your SAM registration as a foreign entity. When you go through and apply in SAM.gov, there's a few things that you want to know that is a little bit different than traditional US based companies. The first thing is you're in SAM, you're going to need your MPIN number. That's the same instructions I have on my SAM entity registration already on YouTube. You're going to request an MPIN number, which is your password for you, for your company, your business. The second thing you want to do is make sure that you use the N cage code that you've already uh, received earlier in the process. So you're going to use that N cage code assigned to your business and the international DUNS number assigned to your business. The third step is when you go to the general information, you want to select what's called foreign owned and located business. So the third step is to select foreign owned and located business. And then the final step, number four, where it says EFT or electronic funds, you can leave that blank because the government, the U.S. government cannot accept foreign banking information. So you want to leave that blank. Um, in that area right there where it says form uh, EFT information. That's it. Now, once you've done those steps, you should be able to go ahead and click accept in the SAM database and the government will allow you to process your application. If for some reason, if it says fail cage validation, you need to go back and make sure that your physical address is the same and that your legal business name matches in all three systems cage code, DUNS number, and SAM. That would be the primary reason why you'd have a failed cage validation. Assuming that you did all those steps correctly, then your SAM entity registration should be ready to go and you can start bidding some of these lucrative government contracts. Now, 
who is the entity or the uh, agency that handles the majority of all the federal contracts? That agency is the Department of State. Here on FedBizOps alone, I'm seeing more than 1,000 active solicitations for projects in the Department of State. At the Department of State's website, it tells you here what the Department of State does. It gives a little bit of description about who they serve and how they do it. And if you click on doing business with the Department of State, it'll take you over to their specific bid website, which is bids.state.gov. So here on bids.state.gov, you can subscribe, get registered, and actually start beginning to do searches for your actual entity and the types of products and services that you want to provide to our U.S. government. But you can see here, this is a database exclusively to doing business international outside of the United States. I would stick right here with the Department of State website and start doing searches for uh, opportunities in your actual countries and your local areas. All right, hope this video helps today. We're going to go into deeper and dive deeper into details more about the international, uh, how to do business with the government internationally. But for now, I wanted you to have the information on how to get started getting registered so that you could be at least eligible and qualified for upcoming opportunities. Thanks for watching as always. We'll see you next time.